Good morning. It is another beautiful Thursday and uh, welcome to for joining me. Thank you for joining me um, for talking to artists. Uh, it's basically a, a podcast designed to chat with a casual conversation with artists to help them share their kind of inspirations and ideas and business tips. So it's for artists from that point of view and also for would-be artists or collectors who just kind of want to understand a little bit more about what happens behind the scenes and how all of the magic happens. I'm Kate Taylor. For people who don't know me, I'm an abstract painter based in Toronto, and um, I just started this during COVID because I thought it would be a really great way to sort of connect with people. So, and, oh, Carolyn, hey, thanks so much for joining. Um, so this week, we're actually going to um, be talking to Corinne Kokolakis, which I have to say, I just love saying her name. It just flows off the tongue so beautifully. Um, she is a, um, a painter who paints uh, children in oil, uh, really beautiful, and captures kind of the transitions of development and growth. And, <laughs> um, and so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to talking to her. She is a mother of three, so is obviously, and a full-time artist, so juggling a lot. And... Um, I'm glad that she's able to find some time from her really crazy busy schedule. So, hey, hi, how are you? I'm good. I uh, good. I'm sort of uh, stuck in the corner here so I can finish my coffee because since COVID, we <laughs> yeah. are not really a morning family, and uh, yes, I'm still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. No, I'm like that as well. I'm also, I'm not a morning person. I also don't love air conditioning and our air conditioning doesn't really work. So everywhere I go, I'm like, I am so hot. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the kitchen. <laughs> it's going to be a hot one today. It's not usually this hot up in my studio and I couldn't figure out whether or not it was just that I was nervous or if it's going to be hot. So uh, I think it's going to be hot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. And after, after the rainstorm yesterday, I thought, oh, it's going to be nice and cool. I'll do this in my, in my garden where it's kind of nice and yeah. quiet and there's no construction happening. So, but no such luck. I'm aiming to be one of your first videos without technical difficulties. So let's see if we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you've jinxed it for sure. Oh, that's what my husband would say. Why didn't you say something like that? <laughs> I know. Well, I, I've already flubbed my opening, so it's just too late. Oh. <laughs> I had sort of the language. It was supposed to be so professional and all oh, put together, wow. and then I flubbed it. But That's anyway, fine. I'm so excited that you could join us. Me too. So as a, um, yeah, so just, um, I just did a bit of an intro in terms of, you know, Mother 3, full-time artist, on the Artist Network board, lots of stuff you're working on, so lots of stuff we can talk about. Sure. But maybe you can talk first about what you're working on. What are you excited about? What's in the studio? Uh, so I'm currently working on this series. Um, I haven't really had a lot of time to work on it. Uh, I was away for a couple of weeks, taking a much needed break. Um, and so I just popped back in and, and started with like a little, a little experimental piece there. Um, but this, the underwater series is, is sort of where I'm moving right now. It's not even up on my website yet. It's, um, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a real, sh well, it's not a real shift. I mean, I think it's a real shift, but it's still kids in water and whatever. <laughs> but for me. But it's definitely, it's, no, it's definitely a different energy though, because the other ones, they're, they're jumping in the water. You get kind of that capturing motion and it's sort of the, there's a bit of a different energy. These ones seem a little bit more tranquil somehow. Yeah, they're, um. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I've been trying to think about how to sort of frame them because, um, you know, it's one thing when I went back to school, we, I, I learned a lot about how to frame your work and um, sort of to look at it critically. And, and, and I, I really, I can't. It's, they're, they're, they're sort of personal. Um, they're very personal, actually. Um, and, and I think that they sit within the same sort of theoretical discourse that the rest of my work sits in but maybe not so it's all still it's still I'm still chewing on it I'm still playing with it um and I'm not even close to done with it so there will be more mm -hmm. <laughs> well I saw yeah I think you posted a little one that was kind of this long thin almost like a yeah, slice yeah that's this which one. was really cool yeah yeah playing with abstraction but not really like I I don't <laughs> I, I'm not sure that's totally abstraction, well, but it's, that's like, how. It's, ab well, it's abstraction within realism, right? When you play with scale and all yeah. of that stuff. I don't think abstractly. I can't even imagine doing what you do. That's just not how my brain works, but um, I'm trying. Well, and vice versa. Yeah. No, I look at your work too, and I'm just, just it, especially the ones underwater, because you have that really weird visual of how the water distorts things, and yet it's still 
beautifully in proportion. The colors are just lovely. And so I think, yeah, I think I really admire your work. It's wonderful. And Thank you. I always love to interview artists where it says like, I could never do that. <laughs> you know? Well, I could never do what you do either. So it's, I, I played oh, with, mine seems easy. <laughs> well, it's not. I played with a little bit of abstract, um, that sort of free flow non-representation or actually wasn't even non-representational. Um, I was challenged to do something without a reference. And I was like, mm -hmm. how does one even go about that? Like, I, where, how, where do you start? I, I just, it wasn't very good. But it was fun to you know, play. It's, it's, it's so funny you say that because I'm, you know, I've been sort of in the back of my mind playing with, um, I sort of started off doing these really giant kind of more realistic uh, flower petals, you know, so super close, kind of like a Helen Lucas type of thing. And uh, so I've been kind of toying in the back of my head about getting back to that. Mm. Um, and I'm having such a hard time allowing myself to use reference. Like I feel like somehow using reference is cheating, even though I know it totally it's not. And for me to do an, a flower that is kind of realistic with a palette knife, which is kind of a whole other level of kind of challenge for me, um, I need to have the reference, otherwise it's just not gonna work, right? Yeah. And it's just, it's so funny. I just cannot seem to allow myself to use a reference. That's so funny. We are, we are incredibly know. opposite then, because like not <laughs> using reference for me is like, you want me to make it up? Like I can't, you know, I paint what yeah. I see, but it, it doesn't, it's not what I see, right? It's not, it's not photorealism. It's a starting it's not, point. It's a starting yeah. point. Like I never know what the painting's gonna yeah. look like, but I, I, I need to know, you know, I need to know where the light hits and how the form is rendered or how to render the form. I, I don't know. I just, oh well, yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially people because our brains are so programmed to recognize people. And so you can so quickly recognize when something's just off. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's my yeah. fear. Always. I'm, I'm always <laughs> terrified that I've done something wrong with a foot or, you know, like somebody's going to notice it and not say anything to me. So it's, you know, I sit a lot for a long time and I stare and I'm like, is anything broken in there? Cause it's really easy to like break a finger or have an elbow go the wrong way. And you're thinking, Ooh, that's, that's not quite yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. I think that elbow is too long mm -hmm. for the body, right? Like proportions. Yeah, I just, I was, um, I did a, an art class years ago kind of for fun and it was um, kind of more painting realism. So I actually tried to really, um, we were reproducing a group of seven, which I really like with a palette knife work. So it was kind of interesting. And I just, it was so hard for me not to deviate, you know, like it's kind of that deviation of, of kind of working from realism. But yeah. anyway, I'm going to go back to it. Yeah. I'm committed. It's, I just need some time. <laughs> time to experiment right we've got it yeah so why not yeah yeah so obviously as a full-time artist and also a full-time mother of three three boys right no actually that's my daughter my youngest my baby oh oh it is yeah, oh yeah, cool yeah. so are all your pictures of your kids uh not all of them um this series is definitely of my daughter because again i said it's it sort of comes from a more personal space um Although I don't know that it'll stay that way. I'm not sure. Um, but actually, it's, it's kids, my friends' kids, my kids' friends, um, my kids. I, I don't paint my kids as much as you'd think. Like I said, this series is definitely my daughter. But the other series, not really that many are my children. They're other people's children. Um, I find it difficult to paint my children. Because you know them so well. Yeah. So you know if anything's a little bit off, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And so, so was kind of, was motherhood your inspiration for this series? You've been painting um, children for a while, for a while, or is that something that kind of came to you later when you went back to school? Or? No, actually, I, I started this. It's funny. It just came up in my, my memories and I shared it. Um, Art Walk in the Square 2017 was my second show ever. And by then oh. I had already started doing the jumpers. Um, they, I don't know where they came from they they just sort of popped up um I think it was well, they're so joyful yeah yeah and really for me I, I had started when I first came back to painting I started into a lot of landscape work and I did a real uh, knife work believe it or not and it was very textured and um very colorful uh and then I very quickly wanted to go back into the figure uh there's something about the figure that really pulls me and it's kind of it's it's um uh, it's really self-centered in a way because um, the figure, it, it, it takes up so much of my brain that I just turn off. I, I stop thinking. And so that, that challenge is really something that I, it's the reason I paint really um, mm -hmm. is the meditative challenge that is, that is the figure or the portrait. 
Um, so I really quickly went back to that. And then um, I went back to school. I had applied to go back to school uh, and had no idea in the summer that I would be. I was just waiting. And I think just before Art Walk Square, they let me back in. And I thought, oh my God, what have I done? So um, <laughs> I went back full time for two years after that. So, um, so yeah. And so what made you decide to do that? Because you already had a degree from OCAD U, right? And then you went back for a no, BFA from OCAD U? No, I didn't have a degree. So I had gone 20 years ago. Um, and the experience was very different back then. Uh, 99, mm -hmm. I believe it was, is when, I, when I went in. Um, and actually, maybe 98. Um, but it was a very different space. It was a very, very different place. The art world was very different. Um, and I, I'm not going to say the experience wasn't, positive but it was eh. I, I didn't finish let's just put it that way um I got to third year uh I even failed my first thesis class I was in I was 20 I think 20 22 yeah. maybe um so I I left painting for a really long time in fact I never touched it again <laughs> after after the first stint um and then I you know I I married kind of young and I had my first at 25 and so um I really got stuck in that you know I'm just gonna by the time you have three kids under five there's no point in working because you know you're you know robbing Paul oh, yeah. to pay the daycare you know like it, it just yeah. there's no point so um you know I, I really did the mothering thing uh for a really long time and then um I sort of started to come out of it and I thought well, what am I gonna do I don't you know like I don't have any skill set because I went to art school and then became a mom. So <laughs> well, lots of skills. It's just harder to do. <laughs> How do you put that on a resume? Those on a resume. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, I had sort of found painting again by accident. It was actually one of those um, girls night out things where you paint night things. And I went out with friends and I thought, oh my God, I've really missed this. This is just, wow. So that sort of started the thought process and then you know I started taking community classes again and then I thought well maybe I'll go back and finish it because it was kind of a bucket list thing you know I, I always wanted to finish school and I never did so that's sort of how it came about. And I think it was interesting because um, I guess we should let people know that uh, Corinne also is on the uh, Artist Network Board. A not-for-profit helps artists with the business of art and does the uh, the curation and the direction of our Leslie Grove Gallery so um, yeah. I've really been very interested to see um, kind of how the direction has changed really since you've kind of taken over as curator and that you approach it in a much more kind of intellectual or theoretical way than kind of we had previously. And is, I'm assuming that's kind of coming from how you went to OCAD U and how you learned to talk about your work and frame your work. And Yeah. And Can you talk about how you kind of apply that? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I, I try to, I mean, I don't go as theoretical as they would in OCAD for sure, but um, I, I try to have a theme that, that, um, requires artists to think about their work a little bit um, and frame or try and think about framing it. Like this current one, where do we land is, is really just a landscape show, right? Because um, you know, we have a very, very wide group of different type, types of landscape artists and, and landscape is a really big genre. And, and I find there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, space for that that kind of work but mm -hmm. we framed it in a way that is you know like we we it's not just about looking at land it's you know we live in it we there's there's so many different uh, relationships we have to it and I, and I found those or I thought they were particularly poignant especially uh, coming out of COVID right because you know we, we were talking yeah. about how people don't have outdoor space or you know how you can't go anywhere so all of a sudden travel and and you know going up north might be difficult like so so thinking about that kind of, um, those kind of, of narratives within landscape. And so that's where the show came out of. But, uh, you know, I, I, people didn't really have to change their work to fit into it. They just had to think about what their work says um, as opposed to just mm -hmm. doing a landscape. So I try to do shows or I try to sort of create themes that, you know, people's work still fit in, but they, they'd have to frame it maybe a little differently or think about it a little differently. So like what you were talking about, reframing this current series, which in my mind looks like it's a very natural con continuation of um, what you were doing before, um, but you feel the need to kind of frame it in a different way or are you still kind of working through that? Um, 
I think that all art, like we, we create art for a reason. We create, um, there's a narrative behind all of the pieces that we make, um, whether we're conscious of them or not. Um, and we're communicating. And so I think there's a, you know, there's a, not a requirement, perhaps a responsibility to think about what you're creating and what it might say to other people. And um like, I mean, I, I started this and, and it all goes back to, sorry, I'm going to go around in a circle, but it all goes back to the That's kid cool. thing. We got lots of time. <laughs> it goes back to the kid thing, right? There was, um, there's a sort of a, in the art world and, and may, and I always complain about this and, and it's changing. Um, but there's sort of, uh, where you, you could disregard it if you paint kids because they're, um, saccharine or they're, you know, too sentimental or, whatever. Um, and I fought really hard against that when I was in school because yeah, that's false. And it sort of comes out of the patriarchy as far as I'm concerned. It's, um, you know, where my work comes from is sort of a long history of women recording their experiences. And, um, you know, I say that I positioned myself between 19th century genre painting, which is, you know, back when women were stuck at home in, you know, in the living room or the salon back then and, and weren't allowed to move about and they, they recorded their view at the window. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, they had these little books that they, you know, painted in watercolor, usually very proficiently, um, where they captured their lives and, and they created these photo albums and, and sort of kept the history. And so, you know, as women, we're, we, we've been the keepers of history and we've been the creators of society in that we, we provide the caregiving and all of these things. And that's changing, um, perhaps not quick enough. But this idea that this doesn't belong in the art world because it's too sweet or soft or saccharine, it just gets my goat. I like it. it that, that to me is... So when I went back to school, I had to sort of think about all of the ways to argue that, to say, no, the, the work that I'm doing is valid and this is why. Um, and so- So the work, the work kind of came first then, right? Like, so in terms of you knew you, you wanted to paint and you knew that you had a real passion for it and you knew there was a direction there that was something you really wanted to explore. And then you need to go back and backfill all the language sure. and the justification for it. But I had to also understand why. I had to understand why I was doing this kind of work. I don't know, I just picked up a paintbrush and I started painting and this was, this, this was the subject matter that I, I sort of was, was drawn to. I didn't really think about why I was just doing it. And then I really, so going back to school, they made me think about, well, why are you doing this? What, what's, what's pushing you in this direction? And, and the reality is, is that it was all I knew. Um, it was all I knew because that's all I'd done is dealt with kids. And I really was one of those, you know, 19th century women who stayed at home and walked to school and came back. And so my world was very small in some ways. Um, and so that's where the, the inspiration came from. That was what I knew really, really well. Um, mm -hmm. So, and combined with, like I said, that sort of selfish, I just want to meditate while I'm painting. So I need that real challenge and I really want to do the figure and I don't want to do a naked woman because I'm just not interested. Um, you know, this is what I, and movement, kids move and that's just so interesting to capture. Um, yeah. So that's sort of where it came from, but I really had to think about why. And, um, and I, and I, it, I did figure out why and, and where it comes from and, and what that, um, argument could be. And then I had to sit and, and, and fit it in the art world. And that was the hard part. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see whether or not that changes. I know, you know, my sister, Helen Etzel went and got her BFA from Concordia and she really did a lot of figures, loved figure work. Um, and, you know, especially when I went to school and when she went to school, it was very, everything was abstract, which ironically, I didn't actually like abstract at the time. But anyway, so for Helen, she wanted to do figurative and she was pretty much talked out of it yeah. because of the same thing. It's like, no one will buy it. It's not to have any interest. You're not pushing any boundaries, which is kind of ridiculous because I mean, there's nothing more connective to the human psyche <laughs> than, than figures, right? Yeah. It's not. Um, so yeah. So hopefully that changes. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, in some ways, perhaps it is, um, you know, because there isn't a lot of figure painters out there now. Um, you know, abstraction mm -hmm. is sort of the, um, or expressionism is sort of the standard. Um, and so, you know, the, uh, yeah, maybe figurative painting is sort of the avant-garde. Maybe it's the next step. I mean, we've been doing 
we've been doing expressionism and abstraction for a while now. Um, you know, yeah. and there's a lot of argument there. Like I can sit there and I could, I can come up with tons of argument about how, you know, we're, we're so bombarded with media and, you know, we're, we're screens. Maybe we need to create these sort of empathetic connections by looking at the figure again. Like there's just, there's so much theory that you can play with. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, and I think the other, the other thing that which is kind of, you know, I mean, typically in history too, like you go to museums and you go to these buildings and you have figurative painting. Now, a lot of those are portraits, so they're a little bit more formal, but you know, you have something like, like Mary Cassatt's fat, beautiful babies, yeah. right? I mean, and they really do uh, draw you in to have a better understanding of your time. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be interesting a hundred years from now. So on our time, you know, there other than there's photography, but even photography doesn't often do figures, right? Um, mm. You know, there, there's a number of two people that do, but it's just, it's an interesting thing. Like my grandmother um, painted figures. And so she used pictures of myself and my brother and sister as subject matter. Yeah. So we have a bunch of them at the house, which is kind of cool because then you end up having, I have a portrait of my mother and a portrait of my grandmother and of my sister and stuff that's, that's in oil paint. But the other weird thing, and I wonder if your kids ever think about this, is that I also know that there's a portrait of me sitting on some stranger's wall somewhere. Well, just because this morning, used yeah. yeah, it's funny. Just this morning, my daughter just got Instagram, which I don't know how I feel about, but we talked about it. So, <laughs> okay. So anyway, she tested, uh, she helped me test my connection today. So that was, that was very helpful. Um, but she said to me, mom, I just got recommended. Um, I just got recommended a, a, a picture of myself. So, you know how Instagram shows you, you know, like oh, you should yeah. follow this or you should look at this post. <laughs> She's like, I just got recommended an, an image of myself. That's just really weird. <laughs> it is kind of weird. <laughs> but cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't, my boys kind of, it bugs them, but she doesn't mind it. Yeah. Well, and the, they'll probably go through a phase too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, but, I, 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 you know, because I, go ahead. I think it's hard to look at paintings of yourself. My sister, again, she did a, a portrait of me. Um, and I love, I know the photograph was taken. And I, the energy was at the cottage. I'm holding my dog. It's just like, it's a wonderful memory. Mm. But it feels so strange to have this portrait of myself in my own house, right? It's just like, yeah. so I love it. And I love the work. And it's a beautiful piece. But I really feel like I will really, really love it like 20 years from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I'm more distant. Yeah. And then there's this really weird thing when you see a portrait of yourself, depending on how the portrait painter has painted it um we're used to seeing ourselves in a mirror image we're not used to seeing ourselves as we as other people see us so oh yeah of course so it always looks kind of uncanny right because you know when you yeah. see yourself you're like wait but that's me but it's not me because it's flipped um right so it's funny because i can do po portraits of children and and the parents are like yeah, yeah 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 but if i do a portrait of say a friend then they're kind of like wait a minute that doesn't quite look right you know <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah oh that's that's so interesting and do you but you don't really do portraits right like if I was going to say hey Corinne I want you to do a portrait of my family to put on my uh, big master you know grand I entrance do wall do portraits there. oh you do I do yeah um so commissions mostly because you know like you said people don't tend to buy other people's portrait um, so commission is, is really where the portrait comes in. And, um, so I do, I've done families. Um, I do people who are over 12. It, it is a thing that can happen. <laughs> um, there are some of those on my Instagram, not many, but there are some there. Um, so yeah, as, as mostly commission work, I do some portraiture for myself because it really is my first passion, my first love. Um, so I, I, I do go back to it. Um, but it's not really the, the work that I put for sale. It's sort of more of an academic, um, a, a series, I guess. Like an exercise sort of. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's a series, but it's more, it's more based in theory and there's like an academic framework around it, um, that I really, uh, rely on when I do my own portraiture for myself. Um, hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's really cool and so do you think I mean of course Chris you can never predict where you're going to be five years from now but do you think you will always do people God, kids, I, can't, portraits, I can't imagine figures. not doing people I, I don't know that I'll always do kids um you know my husband's an author and we always talk about how you know everybody has one book in them and then so I sort of feel like 
uh, this kids are my first book, you know, they're, I'm, I'm writing this book and I don't know what my second book's going to be, but I'm not quite done with the kid thing. I'm still, I don't know if it's that I'm, uh, sort of rebelling because somebody told me I shouldn't. Um, <laughs> that'd be classic artist. I, I, I just don't tell me I can't, right. Like, don't tell me yeah. that I can't do this because then I just want to do it more. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see <laughs> whether it's coming from me or I'm just being obstinate. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, that said, I, you know, this series is sort of coming from me and it's still kids. So I don't know. I, I like, I kind of see the self portraiture because it is my daughter and it's sort of talking about, um, it's sort of talking about being stuck in a, in a, in a space and then trying to move away from it or move out of it. Um, the, the series is called resurfacing. And so it's not necessarily a negative stuck. It's just a, a moving bone from one space to another. And I, I really sort of, all of a sudden it has way more resonance with COVID. Um, and you yeah. know, how, as we're, we're quiet, you were stuck in these quiet, well, we're lucky. Some of us are lucky enough to be stuck in these quiet, safe spaces. Um, that's not true for the rest of the world. Um, you know, so I feel very privileged that I have that, that perspective, but, um, this, this series is sort of becoming a little bit more about that resurfacing. Yes. Resurfacing is, is what I'm calling it. So it, yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's about a transition and that's a personal transition, um, a very personal transition, but I don't think it's one that is, um, not universal. Uh, I think that there are people who oh, can totally, yeah. I wonder too, is it also a transition of like having, having as a, as a mother, you know, you're, there's so much of your identity that's already always kind of locked, you know, connected in with your children. Um, and as they grow and as they get older, you start to see the end where you're, they're going to leave you. And that's, if you've done your job, that's great. They're happy. They leave, they have a good life. Yeah. But it also leaves such a hole in your own life. Right. Right. And, um, you know, I just wonder too, if some of this is kind of capturing, you know, with you capturing your children when there was that, um, aura too of joy and togetherness and your tight family and you've, you've bonded and you're just like your own, your, your own little world within your own little family. Yeah. I mean, there is a certain, um, yes, absolutely. And I think that anybody who, who is a parent reads that, but I think that other people can read my work differently too, even when they're not parents. Um, it has a personal, the whole thing has a personal narrative. I mean, you're right. You get lost. Um, I had three kids under five. I was looking after my father-in-law who was elderly uh, there was a lot of years they were really tough. And, and, um, you know, like I said, I had that one, that one evening where I thought, my God, I missed this. I used to do things like teach myself how to knit crazy things. And I was that, that mom who did those way over the top birthday parties at home. And I had, yeah. you know, these huge three layer fondant cakes with like six different figures that, you know, like depending on what my, my kids wanted, I was dying for creative respect, uh, expression. And so finding painting again, I, now I don't make cakes anymore. Um, I don't throw birthday parties <laughs> anymore. All of the yard. <laughs> well, one can only sitting, do so much. Yeah, you know, all of the yard yeah. collected sitting, you know, collecting dust. It was like, holy crap, this is who I am. And I put it on the back burner for so long. So the whole, my whole journey back into painting has really been about finding myself again or finding out who I really was because like I said I became a mother so young that I don't even know that there was somebody to you know to leave behind and so it, it is a transition for, for for me in terms of the kids getting older and leaving but it's also a necessity it's also you know um, my mental health suffered it's it's you know being at home with kids is is lonely and you feel invisible yeah. and like you can't you know that you're not seen and so this, this really was me clawing my way out of a, of a not great space. And so that's what the, the work is kind of about that in that it focuses on children in a way that puts you in the place of that parent um, and sort of, or hopes to connect you as the caregiver and sort of, uh, with without assuming anything right so you, you could be male you could be female you could have one kid sit, you know what i mean that the idea is that yeah. you you were sitting in the same position that i was in and maybe you're 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 feeling you know 
some of the things that I felt. And I, I mean, one of the criticisms was that I use these moments, they're too happy. And that maybe I should talk about parenting um, in a way that actually highlights that loneliness or that sacrifice or whatever. But my argument is that I don't want to see that. Like if I'm, if I'm, yeah. you know, if I'm struggling, then I want these moments. These are the moments that keep me going. These are the moments that make me do it the next day. Right. And you work through that to be able to create something joyful. I, it's been one of my pet peeves as well is that, um, you know, cause my work also is it's about joy. It's about capturing joy. Yeah. It's a joy you feel in nature. And um, you know, there's somehow this, this kind of aura in the same way is, is that, children is applied to sort of portraiture is that joyful work is also applied to well it's not really serious like you really have to have angst and you have to express this moodiness and this difficulty in life and I mean I personally am not a person who has a lot of angst so it would be kind of inauthentic but also I'm kind of like so why is giving people joy somehow less valuable and less relevant and less serious as an artist than sharing the horrors of my internal life like I just think it's ridiculous well and and that's and that's it. Like a painting was my escape. Why the hell would I want to, you know, paint something that makes me miserable, right? Or that makes me... Which some people do. Yeah. And that's cool if that's your therapy, right? But I agree with you. Like to me, it's about, you know, I want to shift my brain. If I'm not in a good, happy space, then really my goal is to use painting to get myself into a better space, right? And to move it into a place that's happier. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't want to feed into that whole, you know, that motherhood is you know, yeah, you sacrifice and yeah, it's hard. And yeah, but ultimately, you know, these moments are, are what you're working towards, right? These moments of joy yes. or development. Well, it's why, it's why, you know, my work is, it relies heavy on development. Um, you know, the jumpers are actually very much about that because each kid approaches the water in a very different way. And so you sort of glimpsed who and w where they are in that, that yeah. moment. And so, and they have to build to that confidence to be able to jump off that dock, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. you can see, you can see, you can see every year they're, they're, they're different and they have that confidence or they don't. Some of them never do. Some of them, you know, some of them trust their bodies and they're doing these crazy flips and, and others may never, right? They're always <laughs> yeah. going to be plugging their nose. That's my kids. They're always going to be plugging their nose in and off. The oh, dock. my son was a crazy and you're like, oh my God, just don't kill I know, yourself. Right? <laughs> And I love to see the variation. And Macy hasn't broken anything. I love to see the variation. And so in a lot of ways, that's a portrait of development. I mean, it's a portrait of the child, but yeah. it's a portrait of development and, and the variation of development that, that occurs, um, which is, again, sort of something that I know, right? Because I have been yeah. with my kids and I volunteered in the school and I was the lice lady and the lunch lady and, the uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I've seen different kids on different trajectories. Um, and that's why the series is called Trajectory, right? Because it's, hmm. um, so there's a lot of, you know, it looks really happy and joyful and um, perhaps uh, superficial in some ways, but there's, there's a lot behind the work that I do, um, if you really yeah. stop to think about it. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, I definitely see that. But even if you look at it just as a pure um, portrait of a happy child who's swimming underwater, I mean, it's something that, you can also relate to even as an adult, right? Like you probably did that as a child and it was part of, especially growing up in Canada, water is so critical around us. And so mm -hmm. it brings back your own memories too. So I can absolutely see that someone would really connect with something like that in their home. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, I'm happy doing it. I'm going to do a few more of that series. Uh, I haven't done any this year. I, well, I haven't been outside, so <laughs> I haven't really yeah. had the, uh, <laughs> the the resource material so um we've gone away we were at the lake for a couple of weeks so i i've gathered some images so I, i'll be doing a few more of those small series in the in the trajectory series um they're quite popular i haven't really done any of this yeah. year, so I for art walks there that. for art walks where i'll get them done <laughs> yes i know well isn't that good to actually have a deadline right <laughs> well there's that deadline and there's the deadline where my kids technically go back to school on the 15th um but i don't think they will be um at least one of them won't be um so mm -hmm. yeah i have that whole homeschooling is going to start um on the 15th so that's my other deadline so you have kind of a shorter window yeah yeah i'm doing um i'm actually doing my first real actual live person show this year i think it's uh, in uh, september 12th and 13th where we're actually going to set up a tent. Um, it's part of a studio tour, set up a tent on the end of the driveway and, you know, 
have no don't have the back of the tent and so there's like you know obviously social distancing and stuff and it's funny because all of a sudden i'm like oh my gosh i have to actually have real art and enough of it to fill a real tent yeah which because everything's been online it hasn't really been quite the same level of uh kind of deadlines yeah for sure. and i found too that um and thank goodness i'm i'm so pleased that i can say this is that my commissions have been i mean where where my shows dropped off my commissions picked up and i've had a lot of collectors um have really gotten me through this this crazy time um and mm -hmm. i've had you know i haven't had to worry about oh, what, what do I do next? I, like, there was never a time where I sort of thought, oh, I can't make a painting because I had commissions. And, um, you know, while I do get creative with commissions, I'm not developing a new series or, you know, I'm not thinking about it in the way that, um, that I do my, my own work and, and I'm not. So it's been really good because I've just been going from one painting to another painting to another painting. But uh, I don't really have a lot that I've done for me. So, yep. you know, my website, no, I'm, in, I'm in, pretty scarce. I, I, I told, I'm totally can commiserate with you on that one. Cause I look around and I think, no, no, I'm good. I've got some good work. And you realize, no, none of this one, none of this is my work. It's already committed out somewhere yeah. else. Right. And then when you take all that stuff out, you're like, yeah, I got some 12 by 12. So yeah. that's not going to fill a tent. <laughs> yeah. My stock is dwindling very, very quickly. And I've committed some work to, um, uh, I'm working with Baycrest on a uh, oh, on a um, great resource. Yeah, on a, uh, a fundraiser for them that starts in October. So I've committed some work there, and you know, once you do that, you're like, wow, I really need to paint. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you find I, 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 this is a kind of an interesting question too? Because when you're so you're juggling children and obligations and commissions and stuff, and I, you know, being in the uh, in the marketing world was kind of always marketing external client recommendations and responsibilities and emails and stuff like that. Um, I found for me, I, it's almost like I felt like I had to do all that crappy stuff first before I would allow myself the time to get into the studio. Um, and it's, it's a real mind shift for me to try and kind of say, no, the studio and being in the studio and painting is the whole goal of what I'm supposed to be doing. Do you find you struggle with that too? Yeah. I mean, I'm, um, I'm not very good at multitasking. I'm sort of, uh, I'm very project oriented. So um, and you might know this from working with me on, you know, at, at, uh, on the board, but I, I just, I, I'm really <clears throat> get my teeth sunk into something and I work really hard at it and then I move on to the next thing. And so, you know, I, I created my website and I did all of that and then it just kind of died because I shifted my, my focus onto something else. And so I, I can't, I'm really not good at doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's, it's very much a... If I have to get the marketing part done, I do the marketing part for a whole week and then I push it out of the way and then I move on to the next painting. And I paint the same way. I mean, um, I've got a painting on the easel and it'll probably be done in the next two or three days. Um, that's all I will do. I'll take another break and I'll do family stuff, I guess, for a couple of days. And so I, I really, I don't know if it's the best way to work. Unfortunately, it's just the way I do. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, you know, I find I have a, well, I, because I paint flat, I can only work probably about three or four hours straight anyway, because it kills my back. But I find I always tend to kind of like, I very rarely just spend the day in the studio. I kind of, I, I'm a super multitasker and it's probably not really a good thing because it, it's distracting. But I find just, it's just often hard just to kind of go, no, I'm going to actually go in the studio first thing without making sure that my emails are done. I've responded back to people and I've paid my bills and I've done my wood order for day and night or whatever, yeah. right? I, I'm, I tend to do that kind of um, administrative stuff in the morning because, like I said, I'm not a morning person. So I sit with my coffee and I get that kind of work done. I actually mm -hmm. find myself, um, I guess because it's why or the way I paint, the whole turning my brain off is a really big part of it. And so I, I tend to start painting at about two and I sure. work till, um, I tend to, I, I tend to start painting at about two nights. Sometimes I work till like midnight. Um, I, I can't, I can't force myself to work sooner. I don't know what it is. I, I just, my, I can't focus the way that I can, um, in, later on. Once I've got well, I'm like that. I'm definitely a night person too. So I would putter, putter, waste time, do a bunch of crap, be in the studio, not to actually produce anything until about you know three or four o'clock, and I work from four till eight or nine, yeah. right? Yeah. But then with COVID, with my husband working from home now and my daughter was here home too, it's kind of like well, these are times when I want to 
you know, because my kids have been have moved out a while ago. So it's kind of like the time I want to spend now my evenings with my family, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden, I'm like, well, I can't start working at four <laughs> be home with my family at six, right? It's not enough time. I'm lucky because I have so. teenagers and they don't want to spend any time with me anyway. So they sleep all morning. <laughs> They'll come back. <laughs> and uh, they hide in their rooms or they avoid me at night. Um, and then they want to talk at about midnight. They start talking to me. I, do, I don't know why, but they just, you know, they want to talk about all the problems in the world at midnight. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, I, I'm sort of out of that now. I can just... Yeah, I can, I can pretty much go. My husband gets mad because I don't, you know, I'm coming, I'm coming for dinner, I'm coming for dinner, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then, you know, I got to get the oil off and then I eat and then I run away again. So, you know, he's the one <laughs> I piss off the most by doing that, I think. But it is yeah. what it is. <laughs> and can you talk a little bit about, because um, some of this is also about kind of the business of art mm -hmm. um, and sort of, a, you know, obviously you've got a lot on your plate and yet you also find time to volunteer um, with the Artist Network. And I know from personal experience that you put in a huge amount of time uh, to do these shows and we're very grateful. So what's in it for you? Like, why do you do that? What do you feel? How do you feel that helps, helps you? Uh, so it was learning for me. Again, you know, there was, um, I've never been on a board before. Um, so this idea that you guys would even take me was like, wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so uh, there was that. Uh, and, and developing that sort of skill set. Because again, I came straight out of school and then I volunteered, which, which was sort of uh, kind of crazy. I, like I didn't take the time to, to take a break. But I, I really do, the challenge of building something was really, um, it was really compelling. The idea that, you know, I could, we, we were moving the gallery and I could, you know, try and build this thing that it was something from the ground up. I really, I've always loved doing that kind of work. Um, so, I, I mean, what was in it for me is, I, you know, again, it's that whole, I've, I've, I've worked at home for 12 years with no, hey, look what I did, you know, <laughs> like laundry isn't that. So it really is sort of a... <laughs> Um, look what I did. I mean, I, yeah, I worked hard. I worked hard. I put a lot of hours in and, and I'm really proud of what I did. And I think that people, other people benefit from it and they see it. And so there's that, that intrinsic motivation for sure. Um, connections with, with other community members like yourself. Um, and I've created my own, um, I, I missed it from school, but I've created my own little posse of artists that, you know, I bring in the studio with me and I'll, you know, they'll give me advice on when to stop or if I've messed up that arm or, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. That's I, so critical. I, I really, that grew out of Artist Network and my membership with Artist Network. Um, and I, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I'm not going to say that it's totally altruistic. I, like I've learned a lot from being there and I've really enjoyed sort of seeing the inner workings. And I think that that is, you know, that's good for my resume. That's good for, um, you know, that's good for my career. That's, yeah, I mean, and the networking is great for my career. And, and you know, I do, I do, I've always volunteered. I volunteered in the schools. I've, I've always done that because it's, you know, I believe that it's good for the soul. It's good for the community. Mm -hmm. It's another one of those things that women do, right? We, we do the care work and we do all the volunteer work. We do the work of building society. Anyway, it, it, it's just, it's, it's part of who I am. So that's, that's, it, that's why I volunteered. It's going to be hard to step back, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we might suck you back in. <laughs> it is going to be hard to step back. But, um, well, and it, yeah, and I agree. And I think that I think all good volunteer work and all good, especially um, working on a working board where there's, I mean, you know, there's been a huge amount of hours put into this. Um, but I think also it, ha it cannot be 100% altruistic. You have to, as an artist, be able to get something out of it and, and at the same time kind of give back to the community. And, you know, that's really, I think, what makes a successful partnership with volunteering yeah. and actually delivering stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of connections. Um, I've made friends. I, you know, it's been a great experience. Uh, and I'm pretty proud of yeah. what now we've we just done. need to be able to do some live shows so we can reconnect with all those. Yeah. Friends. <laughs> well, I was watching, I was, you know, again, I would like, I talk about how I shift from one thing to another. I was 
very delinquent and I was watching all of your IGTVs last night. Um, I had it running in the background as I was doing things and listening and I thought, oh my gosh, I miss all these people. Like Lane and Kat and who else was there? I just, I, I was like, I miss yeah. talking to them. And when you're at a show, you only talk to them for like two, five, 10 minutes at a time. So it was really neat to get this kind of conversation happening. Well, and that's one of the reasons I did it because, you know, I run into so many amazing artists where I love their work. And I mean, part of it too, is that every time you talk, there's business tips you pick up, yeah. there's ideas, um, and even just a better understanding of how people talk about their art, which is really kind of valuable. Um, and being in COVID, obviously being an extrovert, I was missing people, right? And so this was a great opportunity to kind of force some of those conversations in a really kind of regular manner. And it's been, it's, it's, it's again, totally selfish for me. Like I've loved doing it. It's, it was great. I really enjoyed it. And it really, um, it really highlighted how much I miss those people. Like Lisa had said, you know, they're not part of my inner circle, but I'm so used to seeing them. And, you know, Lisa's mm -hmm. one of those people for me and yeah, I miss seeing their faces and I miss that camaraderie and that, you know, the, the, the network, the network, but also the art world, um, has been very supportive yeah. and, and that sort of, you know, you pat each other on the back and you hold each other up. And I've, I've always loved that about my, for my very first show, people have been so generous with their, with their support and their knowledge. And, um, I just, you know, I, that's another reason why I, I volunteer because I want to give that back to other people. Yeah. Well, we're blessed. I think it's a really, um, the Toronto arts community is a very supportive and, wonderful community to be part of right I don't think there's a lot of competition no. even though it's technically we're all competing for a collector's dollar but I do love that kind of level of support yeah absolutely so we're almost at the end wow. so I'm going to ask my this is my new <laughs> this is my new thing now because I was told I needed to have a good end okay so we're doing Kate's quickies okay. so these are like a couple of quick questions sure. and uh okay if you could take two colors with you only you could only use two colors in your paintings which would they be oh geez Louise ah uh... <laughs> Wow. It would have to be phthalo because I always use phthalo. Um, I, I don't think I could take that out of my palette ever. Uh, and white, I guess. So blue and white. Is that crazy? <laughs> well, it kind of makes sense to be water, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I don't and know. Do you, have, do you have a brand that you prefer? Um, are you brand loyal or are you brand schizophrenic I, like I am? I, as long as it's buttery. I, I'm not a Winsor Newton fan. Uh, I know there are a lot of people who are, but I paint straight from the um, the tube. There's no, I, I don't mix it with anything and I actually don't even clean with solvent. So um, it has to be really buttery and it has to be very spreadable. So Gamblin's really good uh, and Graham uh, and Stevenson's. I love Stevenson's paint, but they're gone. Um, we were just, Lisa and I were just talking about that the other day because I found a bag of Stevenson's paint that I had, but they're all ochres and colors I don't use. So I'm like, hey, if you can use them, yeah, go for I it. Yeah, I miss them. So I'm actually running out of Stevenson's oil paints and I, so I'll go back to gambling, I guess. But um, it's my go-to. It has been since I was in school. I, I bought them out when they, <laughs> when they went on sale, when they were closing. I bought as much as I could. So, yeah. Um, do you have a business tip for emerging artists that you think would help them kind of get on their right career? Oh goodness. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> my first show, my husband had, to, I remember it was, it was Oakville and I was sure that I wasn't going to get accepted. And I, you know, I'd filled out the application and then I was just so jittery. Like, why would they take me? And, and my husband was like, oh, Jesus. And he promised, he promised <laughs> submit. And I, I was, I was so mad at him. I was like, what are you doing? I'm not ready. Uh, and then I got in and then it wasn't so bad. So then I went to Artwork Square, Walk Square a couple weeks later. Uh, so just do it. Just yeah, it's scary and it's you'll never it, don't you think it's a little bit like motherhood you're never really gonna no, be ready. ready you just gotta kind of do it you just gotta kind of do it and I I think that we're always our worst critics so your 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 work is probably way better than you think it is uh, you know yeah. and it and it develops right yeah. like I mean I look back at the work I did at the first like Riverdale Art Walk you know 12 years ago or whatever and like for sure you can see a trend trajectory and it improves and it keeps getting different and yeah absolutely that's kind of the point of it um favorite artist living or dead Oh, favorite of oh, that. Who's your inspiration? Oh, I've got so many. Do I have to pick one? Oh, goodness. Uh, no, you can have up to four. <laughs> I don't know. Whoever. Uh, Lucian Freud. Uh, Mary Pratt. Uh, Bart, Mar Bart, Mar Mar Moriso. Um, and Christian Fluke. Hmm. Very different uh, group. 
Very varied. Y- yeah. Okay. Very, yeah. And um, this is the big one I always like to ask at the end. What would your big, fat, hairy ass goal be? Where would you love to be? Oh, gosh. You know, like, for example, really... I'll give you an example. So my hairy ass goal, which is completely unrealistic, but is to have a solo show at the moment. <laughs> That's my hairy ass goal. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Um, mine would be to maybe paint uh, and host workshops or something like that somewhere in Europe. I mean, that's, it's, not a, it's not actually an oh, area school, fun. but I, like this idea that I could go and I just want to paint. I just want to be able to paint. <laughs> I, I want to be able to help other people paint. I don't, I don't care if I end up in MoMA. I don't care. I don't care. Just, I just want to be able to paint and support my habit. Um, so that, that's not a yeah. hairy ass goal. I, sorry. I don't <laughs> know that I have one. Is that crazy? I should really think about no, that. No, that's not crazy. Well, I mean, these questions have just popped on you too. Like you didn't know they were coming. So. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Here, I thought you were going to ask point. me about a, a desert island and I was going to say my phone in my RV, but you know, that was gonna be... <laughs> I, I thought I was going to get you there. Nope. See, I've got a list of 13. Oh, and you pissed. So you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> this has been fun. Well, this has been really lovely. And thank you so much for taking your time and, uh, and being so candid. I think that's always kind of really, really interesting and really helpful for people. Oh, thank you. And uh, thank you for doing this. So I will post the work. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really been wonderful to, uh, to chat. Yes. And have, we'll talk to you later. Have a wonderful day. And I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to cancel you out now. And I just want to thank everybody for joining us. That was, uh, yeah, hopefully you found the conversation interesting. And I really, uh, I really did, as I always do. So that's wonderful. Um, we've got Sherry Hart coming up uh, next week. So uh, please help, please join us tomorrow, next week. Jesus, please join us next Thursday at 11 o'clock for Sherry Hart. Anyway, have a great day and be creative and love your life.